Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. On today's video tutorial, we will be focusing on measurements, particularly conversions. So I will be taking you guys through the conversion factors for length, volume, weight, cooking, and temperature okay so please make sure that you have a notebook with you and please also make sure that you watch the whole video i will also be going through examples just as a way to ensure you understand each and every conversion that i'll be going through please make sure that you like this video tutorial and please also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so without any further ado let's get started with the video tutorial so like i mentioned guys on today's video tutorial we are going to be looking at measurements particularly conversions right so let us have a look at the learning outcomes for this video tutorial right so after watching this video tutorial guys you should be able to express measurement values and quantities and units that are appropriate to the text right and you should also be able to calculate values using a given formula right so guys please make sure that you watch this whole video please make sure that you have a notepad with you and you are jotting down very important points that are going um that i'm going to be mentioning to you guys that will help you when you are required to convert either the length the volume the weight or cooking conversions that you might be given in your tests or exams right so please make sure that you watch this whole video okay guys so let's get started so we're going to be looking at the conversion factors for length right so guys when it comes to converting length right i'm gonna be i'm giving you guys four conversion factors that you guys need to memorize that will help you when you are required to either convert millimeters to centimeters millimeters to meters centimeters to uh, meters or a meter to kilometer right you need to memorize this table because it won't be given to you guys right so let us have a look at this conversion table 10 millimeters is the same as saying you have one centimeter, right? So 10 millimeters is equal to one centimeter. A thousand millimeters is equal to one meter. A hundred centimeters, right? Is equal to one meter. And a thousand meters is equal to one kilometer, right? So those are the four important conversion factors that you guys need to memorize and know off by heart when it comes to length, okay? But now, how can we apply this, okay? How will this help us? Let us look at an example where we are required to use the conversion factors for length to move from one unit to another unit. And guys, so let's have a look at example one, right? Example one asks us to convert the following units right and remember to show all of your calculations so let us look at question a we are told that a leaf is 25 millimeters long how long is it in centimeters right so from this question we can see that we want to convert millimeters to centimeters right so then we go to our conversion table but guys you need to know this off by heart right so we go to our conversion table and we look right at the conversion factor from millimeters to centimeter and we can see that 10 millimeters is equal to one centimeter right so we're going to use this conversion factor to answer our question Okay, so we're going to use the conversion factor of 10 millimeter is equal to 1 centimeter, right? And we already know that we want to convert millimeters to centimeters, right? So guys, you need to remember that when you are working with conversions, right? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself. Number one, what do you want? 
Number two, what do you have? Okay, so you need to ask yourself, what do you want? What do you have? So in this case, what do we want? We want to convert to centimeters. And what do we have? We have the leaf in millimeters. So we're going to take that 25, 25 millimeters, right? And you multiply it by what you want, right? You want the value in centimeters, right? So you're going to look at your conversion table. And that's the conversion factors that we are going to be using, right? So you're going to multiply by what you want, which is the one centimeter. And you're going to divide by what you have, which is the 10 millimeter. Okay, so let us go through what you do again. First of all, you ask yourself, what do you want? Okay, so we want to convert to centimeters, right? And then you ask yourself, what do we have? We have units in millimeters, right? And then you look at your conversion factor table, right? And we know that 10 millimeters is equal to one centimeter, right? Then you multiply by what you want and you divide by what you have, okay? So if you punch 25 multiplied by one over 10, you will find that your answer is going to be equal to 2.5 centimeters, right? So from here, you can see that the millimeters there and the millimeter there will cancel and you will be left with the units of centimeters, okay? So let us look at question B. Please try it quickly on your own. Pause the video and then play the video to see if you were able to do it. All right, so let us look at question B, right? So question B says, a sofa is 187 centimeters long. How long is it in meters, right? So we've got a sofa that is 187 centimeters long and we want to convert these centimeters to meters, right? Right, so you've got 187 centimeters and you want to convert that to meters, right? So what is the conversion factor that you use if you want to move from centimeters to meters, right? We said that 100 centimeters, right, is equal to one meter, right? So a way to remember this, think of century is 100 Right, a century is a hundred years, so centimeters is a hundred centimeters is equal to one meter. So that is the conversion factor that we are going to be working with to convert the 187 centimeters to meters, right? And then guys, I said that you need to ask yourself these questions. What do you want? And what do you have? So what do we want? Okay. We want to convert to meters, right? So we put the M, right? And then what do you have? You have centimeters, right? So we have our value in, or our units in centimeters, right? So we're gonna put the 187 centimeters, and we're gonna look at our conversion table. That states that 100 centimeters is equal to one meter, right? And then you're gonna multiply by what you want, which is the meter, right? So you're gonna multiply it by the one, and you're gonna divide by what you have, and you have your units in centimeters, so you're gonna divide by your 100 centimeters. And from there, you punch it into your calculator, and you find that 187 centimeters multiplied by one divided by 100 centimeters is equal to 1.87 meters okay so you look at your question you you ask yourself what do you want and we know that we want our units in meters you ask yourself what do you have we've got units in centimeters then you use the conversion factors right to help us convert the centimeters to meters and we found that 100 centimeters is equal to one meter right so we took 187 centimeters you multiplied by what you want which is one meter and you divide by what you have which is the 100 centimeters, right? And you find that your answer is 1.87. And another way to check 
whether the formula that you used is correct is that your centimeters should cancel so that you're only left with the meter as your unit okay let's look at the conversion factors for volume so when you're working with the conversion factors and or if you have to convert um volume units right you need to remember that one a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter one thousand liters is equal to one kiloliter and guys they love asking this one a thousand centimeters cubed is equal to one liter right so you need to memorize these conversion factors for volume because once you've memorized them it will come in handy when you're in your test or in your exam right let us have a look at a practical example to help us apply this concept that we have just learned now so example two yeah so this is c harry's household uses 1023 liters of water per month how much water do they use in kiloliters right so we want to convert the 1023 liters to kiloliters right okay so you've got 1023 liters and you want to convert that to kiloliters right so what is the conversion from liters to kiloliters 1000 liters is equal to one kiloliter so that is the conversion factor that we will be using okay so you've got a thousand and twenty three liters right you multiply it by what do you want all right so we want kiloliters so you're going to multiply by one kiloliter divided by what do you have we have our units in liters already right so you're going to divide by 1000 liters to get our answer in kiloliters right another way to check if your answer is correct the liter and the liter should cancel leaving you with the units in kiloliters right so 1023 multiplied by 1 over 1000 is equal to 1.023 kiloliters okay so please try out question d on your own a tin contains 3.5 liters of paint how many milliliters of paint is in the tin right so you are converting what the 3.5 liters to what to milliliters okay quickly try it on your own pause the video and once you're done play the video to see if you have done it correct okay so let us have a look so you've got 3.5 liters of paint and you want to convert that to milliliters of paint okay so what is the conversion factor that we are supposed to use we know that a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter okay okay a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter okay so how can we apply this conversion factor to help us answer our question you write down what you have which is 3.5 liters you multiply it by what you want and you want to convert to milliliters so you multiply it by a thousand milliliters and you divide by one what you have one liter okay. so you multiply by what you want which is you want to convert to milliliters so you multiply it by a thousand and you divide by what you have you have liters so you wanna divide by one liter right and how do you check if your answer is correct the liters are supposed to cancel so if that cancels and that cancels you'll have your answer in milliliters so if you take 3.5 multiplied by a thousand you will have your answer to be 3500 milliliters so now let us have a look at the type of questions that they love asking you guys in your exams they won't just simply ask you to convert liters to milliliters 
right? But the question will be asked in a context of, you need to think, for you to be able to answer this question, I need to convert something into something to be able to see what is happening, right? So let us have a look at this learning outcome that I was talking about. Express measurement values and quantities in units that are appropriate to text. Right, so that is what we're going to be doing, right? So this is like a, a, an application question that they love asking in your exam. They love asking questions like this in your test and exam to test whether you are able to take down information that is given to you guys and put it together to give an answer that makes sense. Okay, so let us have a look at example three, uh, question A. Right, we are told that an urn of boiling water in an office has a capacity of 20 liters. Right, so we've got an urn. So, an urn is what they use in offices to make tea. Right, so we've got an urn. So, this urn can take or hold 20 liters of water. Right, let's look at question A if it is filled to maximum capacity. Calculate the number of 20 milliliter cups that can be shared from it. Right. So you can see already with this question, we've got a problem. We are told the amount of water that this urn can hold is 20 liters. But then again, we are told that how many cups, how many 250 milliliter cups can be shared from this urn, right? So we've got units in milliliters and we've got units in liters, right? So to be able to answer this question, what do we, what should we do, guys? We need to convert either the urn to milliliters or we should either convert the cups to liters so that we will be able to put everything together to answer this question, right? So I'm thinking that we can convert the urn to milliliters and once you've converted the capacity or the amount of water that this urn can hold into milliliters, then we will be able to take the answer that we've obtained, divide it by the 250 milliliters, right, to get the number of cups that can be made from this urn. Okay, so A, we are told that this urn has a capacity of 20 liters. And we want to find out what the capacity is in milliliters. So that's the first step. Okay. So how do we convert liters to milliliters? Remember, we said that a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter. That's the first step. Okay. Then you take your 20 liters. You multiply it by what do you want? We want to convert to milliliters. And you divide by what do you have? So we've got liters. So you're going to divide by one liter, right? To get your answer in milliliters. So 20 liters multiplied by a thousand milliliters over one liter is equal to 20,000 milliliters, right? How can you check whether your answer is correct? The liter and the liter should cancel, leaving you with your units of milliliters. Okay, so our answer is 20,000 milliliters. Okay, so now we have the capacity or how much water this urn can hold in milliliters, right? So this is our urn and it can hold... 20,000 milliliters of water, right? But now how can this help us answer our question? What is our question asking us? We need to calculate the number of 250 milliliter cups that can be shared from it. So how many 250 milliliter cups can we get from this 20,000 milliliter urn, right? So what do we do? You take your 20,000, right? You divide by your 250, okay? 20,000 milliliters divided by 250 milliliters to get the cups, the number of cups that you can get from this urn, right? That will give you 80 cups, okay? So 80 cups can be poured, 
Okay. So do you guys see that they didn't ask you to they didn't ask you to just convert from uh, liters to millimeters, but they asked the question in a way that requires you to think that okay, if they give me the 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 the, the units in liters for me to be able to get how many cups I can get from this urn, I need to convert, right? So you need to apply now the knowledge that you know when it comes to conversions to help you answer your measurement questions that um, have conversions in them, right? Okay, so let us look at question B, guys. After everyone has had their morning coffee, there are only six liters of water left in the urn, okay? So everyone has had their coffee and there's only six liters of water that is left in this urn, okay? How much water is this in milliliters, okay? That's your number one that you need to answer. Number two, how many 250 milliliter cups of water are left in the urn now, okay? And number three, what percentage, calculating percentage now, is the remaining six liters of the urn's capacity take some time pause the video try this on your own try to understand what the question is asking you right and once you've attempted the question play the video and see if you managed to get it correct okay so now you've attempted the question let us have a look at the answer Right, so B wants us to calculate how much water is this in milliliters, right guys? So I'm sure you noticed that from here, we are required to convert the six liters to milliliters, right? Okay, so what is the conversion factor to move from liters to milliliters or from milliliters to liters? Thousand milliliters is equal to one liter all right and we want to convert six liters to milliliters okay okay so what do we do you take your six liter you multiply it by what you want so you multiply it by a thousand milliliters and you divide by what you have and you have your units in liters so you're going to divide by one liter Okay, punch that into your calculator. Six multiplied by a thousand over one, you get six thousand milliliters. To check if your answer is correct, your liters and that should cancel, leaving you with the units of milliliters. Okay, so we've answered our one. Let's look at number two. How many 250 milliliters cups of water are left in the urn now, right? So we've basically calculated that, okay, we've got 6,000 milliliters of water that is left in the urn, right? So we're gonna do what we did with the 20,000 milliliters, right? You're gonna take that 6,000 milliliters, right? Divided by your 250 milliliter because one cup is equal to 250 milliliter to so get how many cups can we get from that 6000 milliliters which is 24 cups so 24 cups are still left okay and lastly let us look at number three what percentage is the remaining six liters of the urn's capacity Okay, so let us actually try and see what this means. So now we want the percentage, ne? right? We are told that initially, right, this is three. We are told that the urn's capacity, right, is 20,000. So that is our urn. And the capacity of this urn is 20,000 milliliters, right? Okay, and 20,000 milliliters is basically equal to 100%. Because what if your urn is filled up to 20,000 milliliters, right? It's filled to the top like that, right? It's completely filled with our water, right? But now we want to determine if there's only 6,000 milliliters left in the urn. What is that percentage? 
okay so what you do is you take the six thousand okay so you're gonna take that six thousand right six thousand milliliters you're gonna multiply it by what you want we want a percentage and a percentage is a hundred right a percentage is a hundred divided by what you already have right we know that in total the earn was 20 thousand milliliters right and that will give us the percentage that is left in the urn 30 percent okay or if you're not comfortable with this method you just take your six thousand right divided by twenty thousand okay multiplied by a hundred right so you have basically what you left divided by what the total capacity of water that the urn could hold multiplied by 100 because you want the percentage when you want the percentage guys you always multiply by 100 and you'll still get 30 percent so that's your first method that you can use or you can use the second method right so with the first method you take your 60,000 milliliters multiply by what you want you want your answer in percentage and when you're working with the percentage guys you know that a percentage of something to get a percentage you multiply it by 100 divided by what you have right when you already had the capacity or the capacity of water that the urn could hold which is 20,000 milliliters and you found that it's 30 percent or you can simply take your 6,000 divided by what you have, right? Divided by what you had, which is two, um, 20,000 multiplied by 100, which is equal to 30%. Okay, let us have a look at the conversion factors for weight. Milligrams, that is the same as saying one gram, okay? If you've got 1,000 grams, that is the same as saying one kilogram okay if you have a thousand kilogram that is the same as saying one ton okay so these are the important these are the conversion factors that you guys need to remember for when you are working with weight let us have a look at application of these conversion factors Okay, example four. Mr. Boyson's needs to buy sand to build a new room. Okay, in his house. Sand is sold for 23 Rand per kg, right? So one kg is equal to 23 Rand. Mr. Boyson's needs to buy 0 0.8 tons of sand in order to build the room. Write the amount of sand needed in kg. Write the amount of sand needed in kg, right? So we've got 0 0.8 tons of sand and we need to write this in kg. 0 0.8 ton, right, of sand and we want to convert this to kg, okay? What is the conversion factors that we need to remember? A thousand kgs is equal to one ton. Okay, so you're going to take 0 0.8 tons, right? Okay, and then you need to ask yourself, what do we want, right? We want to convert to kilograms. So you're going to multiply by a thousand kg and divide by what you have. And we've got our units in tons. So we're going to divide by one ton okay to get your answer 0 0.8 multiplied by a thousand over one you get 800 kg and how do you check if you've answered your question correctly the ton and the ton should cancel leaving you with the kg as the units all right so to answer your question Write down the amount of sand that is needed in kg, right? So Mr. Boyson needs 800 kgs of sand. Okay, let us look at question B. Calculate the total amount of money he will have to spend to buy enough sand 
for the project right sand is sold for 23 rand per kg so 1 kg is equal to 23 rand so what did we already calculate in a we already calculated the amount of sand that he needs right so for us to calculate the total amount that he will pay for the sand that he needs what do we need to do right so we're going to simply take that 800 kil kilograms and you're going to multiply it with your 23 rand so we're going to multiply these 800 kilograms by 23 to get the total amount that oh, mr boysons needs to pay to buy enough sand for the project and that is 18,400, right so mr boysen needs to take out 18,400 to buy enough sand for the project let's look at number c if sand is only sold in 50 kg bags how many bags will mr boysen need to buy right so we already calculated in a guys the amount of sand that he needs right and we calculated the amount of sand that oh, mr boysen needs to be equal to 800 kil kilograms right so if mr boysen needs 800 kilograms of sand and we are told that the sand is only sold in 50 kg bags how many bags will mr boysen need to buy okay we already know that mr boysen needs 800 kilograms of sand right and we are also told that it is only sold in 50 kg bags so you need to divide by that 50 kg right to get the amount of bags that he needs to buy right so 800 divided by 50 which is equal to 16 so mr boyson needs to buy 16 bags all right guys and let us have a look at the cooking conversions so if you are working with cooking conversion this is the table that you guys need to memorize and know of by heart right so one cup is equal to 250 milliliters right one tablespoon is equal to 15 milliliters and one teaspoon is equal to five milliliters right so this is a very important conversion table that you guys need to remember for when you're asked to convert things or units um especially when it comes to cooking okay so let us have a look a practical application of this all right i'm just gonna do one with you guys okay so let's have a look at example five jonathan uses the following recipe to make chocolate muffins so jonathan is making chocolate muffins and these are the ingredients that he needs so we're just going to do um question one together just quickly write down this question guys so that you'll be able to also do it on your own i'm going to do the first one with you guys and you'll do the others on your own okay if one teaspoon is equal to five milliliters calculate how much baking soda jonathan will use give your answer in milliliters so you've got one teaspoon so here yeah, it's very simple this is actually nice because they have given you the conversion factor and they tell you that one teaspoon is equal to five milliliters okay is equal to five milliliters right so calculate how much baking soda or jonathan will use give your answer in milliliters so we have to go to the baking soda here's our baking soda and jonathan needs two teaspoons of baking soda right so we're going to convert these two teaspoons into milliliters because they want us to give your answer in milliliters right okay so jonathan has two teaspoons of baking soda and we want to convert these two teaspoons to milliliters so what do we do you take the two teaspoons right multiplied by what you want and what do you want you want your answer to be in milliliters so you're going to multiply it by five milliliters and you're going to divide by 
what you have which is one teaspoon to get your answer so it's two multiplied by five over one to give you 10 milliliters of baking soda how can you check if our answer is correct the teaspoon and the teaspoon cancel right and you will be left with the units in milliliters so 10 milliliters of baking soda is needed by jonathan right let's just have a look at question two right question two says calculate the amount of vanilla essence jonathan will use in his recipe so let us have a look at a vanilla essence that he will use so here is our vanilla essence and he needs one teaspoon of vanilla essence and we need to write this in milliliters right okay this is turning into a cooking class right so one teaspoon of vanilla essence right and how can you convert a teaspoon into milliliters we look at the same conversion table that tells us that one teaspoon is equal to five milliliters so you're going to take the one teaspoon that we want to convert right multiplied by what we want so we want it to be in milliliters so we're going to multiply it by five milliliters and you divide it by what you have we already have it in the units of teaspoons <laughs> right so divided by a teaspoon right to get your answer so one teaspoon multiplied by five over one right is equal to five milliliters of vanilla essence how can you check if our answer is correct the teaspoons and the teaspoons cancel and you will be left with the units in milliliters okay so jonathan needs five milliliters i think i've really gone through everything like a thousand times to ensure that you really really understand how you are supposed to use these conversion factors okay so let us wrap up the lesson guys and look at temperature conversions right so usually with temperature guys if i'm not mistaken they usually give you guys the formula to convert from degrees celsius to degrees fahrenheit or from degrees fahrenheit to celsius right let us look at the formula right degrees celsius if you want to convert from celsius to fahrenheit this is the formula that you use multiplied by 32 multiplied by oh minus 32 multiplied by 5 over 9 and the other formula if you want to convert from fahrenheit to degrees celsius it's 9 over 5 multiplied by the degrees in celsius plus 32. okay let us look at a lego example okay guys and see how we can apply this formula okay Let's look at this example. Convert the frying temperature of 350 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit, right? So it's nice here yeah, because they've already given us the formula. So they have basically simplified our lives and we love that, right? So what we need to do is we are simply going to substitute the values that we're given to get the value that we want, right? So degrees in Fahrenheit is equal to nine over five multiplied by degrees in Celsius plus 32. So what do we do with this um, formula, right? We want to convert the frying temperature of 350 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. So when we see C, we're gonna substitute 350, right? So this is super easy. So F, right, is equal to nine over five. 5 multiplied by 350 degrees Celsius plus 32. You simply punch that into your calculator to find that your value in degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 662 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, guys, so that is it. For today's video tutorial, I hope it helped. 
in helping you guys understand conversions i think i went through everything in depth i explained everything in depth by giving you guys the conversion tables that you're supposed to use and by also giving you examples showing you how you're supposed to to apply it right please don't forget to like this video please also don't forget to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and also share the channel with your friends that are doing mathematics literacy and that is all for today's video tutorial guys i hope you guys enjoyed it and that is it guys and i'll see you guys on my next upload at distance learning with lee where i make learning mathematics super easy guys. Thank you.